Okay, happy Wednesday. It is day eight of our James Bible reading plan. And today's is going to be a little more on the heavy side, not heavy in terms of it'll leave you sad feeling, more just weighty. This is a reading where we can't just brush by it. We have to actually sit and soak in it. And it may lead you, at least I hope it will, to a little bit of reflection. It certainly has for me. This is another one of those sections in James, one of those mic drop moments, those teachings that he's leading us through that causes us to think about the way that we use our words. Um, the word that he uses to kind of signify that is the tongue. He's talking about um, the way that we use our tongue, the way that we use our words. I'm going to be reading from the CEV, which is a little bit different than the ESV, but I think the main ideas are, are still exactly the same. Okay, so starting in verses, let's say five and six, the end of five into verse six. Think about this, he writes, a small flame can set a whole forest on fire. A small flame can lead to an entire forest fire. The tongue is a small flame of fire. A world of evil at work in us, it contaminates our entire lives. Because of it, the circle of life is set on fire. The tongue itself is set on fire by the flames of hell. Oh, like, doesn't it just leave you with that weighty feeling? Here's what I think James is trying to say. And he's going to go on to explain this a little bit more in the next two verses. James is saying that when we use our tongue for, for works of evil, he's going to go on in the next verse to talk about we bless God with the same mouth that we then turn around and criticize or put down or um, talk badly even just about other people. We it's like a small fire starting in our mouth that can lead to incredibly destructive results. Think about that. The way that we use our words, he's saying, has catastrophic influence, whether we use it for good or whether we use it for bad. And it's like when we use our tongue to bless God on the one hand and then curse our neighbor, it's like our very tongue is set on fire by hell itself. Now, this is an idea, we don't often talk about hell, but this is something I don't want us to miss. He's saying that this, this being set on fire by hell itself, it points to hell as being a present reality in this world. Hell is not some place we go in the end. We don't bide our time trying to decide, do we go to heaven? Do we go to hell? Or, you know, wondering what we're going to do and trying to judge. No, no, no. James is saying it's actually um, a present reality. Hell is something here and now. And I don't think any of us, when we look around this world, would disagree with that, that hell is with us now, just as Jesus will teach. And it has taught by this point when James is writing that the kingdom of God is a present reality that's here with us, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven. And he's saying that what we have to remember, particularly around this idea of how we um, use our words, what flows from our heart, is this idea that hell is inside of us. We are part of the way that hell comes into this world. It's not totally separate from us. We're actually uh, the agents that bring hell into the world. When we curse our brothers and sisters, when we, um, we can praise God all we want, but if we don't love other people at the same time, then that's part of why this world is the way that it is. Just a small flame James says, can set a whole forest on fire. And so this is something I think we have to wrestle with. How do we use our words? When I was, uh, I wrote about this in the email when I was little, uh, middle school, I guess that's not too little. Uh, I had a teacher who got onto one student, and I really do mean it wasn't me, surprisingly, uh, who used a bad word in class. And she told him, you know, those words that you use, they are sign of an inward problem. They're a sign of a heart problem. And that has always stuck with me. The way that we use our words, it's a sign of what's deep down inside of us. It's a sign of 
uh, maybe something's not quite right in our hearts. Jesus, remember, wants to do an inward transformation. It's not about behavior modification. That's not what Christianity is. Christianity is not about a rule book. It's, it's an inward relationship that transforms us from the inside out. And I think what James is trying to say is he's, he's linking arms with Jesus here. And he's saying, if you find yourself constantly using your words, even if they're blessing God on the one hand, to harm other people, there's something going on in the inside that we need to invite God into um, to transform us from the inside out. Because after all, he finishes it by saying this in verse 11, both fresh water and salt water don't come from the same spring. It doesn't come from Jesus, right? You're not going to find Jesus talking badly about other people at the same time he's blessing God. Now he gets on the Pharisees, but that's a righteous anger. It's a little bit different. And he says, in verse 12, my brothers and sisters, can a fig tree produce olives? Can a grapevine produce figs? Of course not. Fresh water doesn't flow from a salt water spring either. So this is not to say that, oh, we are um, hellish creatures, though I think we at times can be. What this verse should do, what this passage should do, is prompt you to do a little inward reflection. It's definitely what it's doing for me this morning. And ask ourselves, what what is coming up out of our tongues? How are we using our words? And is it a sign that we need to invite God into our lives and, and spend a little time working on some of the inward things in us? Some of the hurts and the trauma, the, the triggers, right? The emotions that we've kind of stuffed down that then come up through our words. The fear that's inside of us, the anxiety, all of these deep rooted things. Jesus wants to get down into the heart of it. He doesn't want to just change, oh, well, don't cuss anymore. <laughs> I think Jesus wants to go beyond that. He wants to get into these root issues. And the question is, will you allow him to do it in your life? And I'm sure going to work on uh, some of those things in my own life as well this week. I hope you're enjoying this reading plan and we'll see you back here again tomorrow.